Live on the edge. There we go. I don't know why it wasn't focusing on my face, but it wasn't focusing on my face. As you well know, I am an iPadOS first user. You can even see it over my shoulder. I'm actually using it with the second monitor lately. So we'll get to that and what that means and how I like it later, not right now. But I'm gonna to talk today about my favorite iPadOS apps, the ones that I just use every day. My first app, kind of like the grandparent, granddaddy, grandmommy, grand whatever of all apps that gets its own category is Shortcuts because it's freaking glue. It's awesome. I love it. It's this is probably the biggest one that I feel handicapped when I'm on Mac OS because I can't like I have my blog post all automated. I hit one button, one icon and it pulls from the Git repository, it asks me if the file, I put the file in the right spot, and then it sends it all off for me and I'm done. Like, that's awesome. Same with like formatting the top headers of my Statimic files for my site or grabbing all the links out of my YouTube. So like, here's my script on one writer. Once I'm done with this and I'm prepping it for YouTube, I will actually just grab the whole thing and send it off through shortcuts and it'll pull every link out for me and put it in one document with everything I want below it and it asks me for the description and gives me the text I want for YouTube. I usually have to correct one or two of the links because it's you know writing here and at YouTube I need it to be a little different and like a list of links, but still it does it for me. It, it It's just amazing. It grabs all my links. I have a newsletter I do on Fridays. You can get that at curtismichael.ca slash subscribe and it does all those links for me too. It grabs all my five articles, it puts them all together, it formats them properly, it's awesome. It automates things for me, like I said in a previous video, which I will try to remember to put up here, 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 here. So next one we're gonna look at is category of development apps. These are the apps I use to code, to produce sites for clients, to earn really most of my income still, because that's what I do. I really don't earn anything off YouTube. I just, I do it because one day I might earn it. First one, Blink Shell. It is kind of the crux tool. If there was no Blink shell, I couldn't actually do development because I think anything else kind of sucks. You can't do local development on iPad, um, but Blink shell lets me remote into a digital ocean server. I've done a video on this as well. I'll, I'll try to put links in, but I'm terrible at that part. So I'll try to put links in below or maybe a card, something. Blink shell, it's awesome. Next big tool that you, you don't need it unless you're doing a lot of front end work. I don't do a lot, but I do some front end work is a good browser with web development tools. I've tried one web tools I recommend in one of my other videos, but what I've used now is Inspect because it's just way better. It's got a good console in it. It's got good browsing tools in it. Um, it it's just works quite well. I like it. It's tabbed as well. Web tools was not tabbed. This has tabbed browsing so I can like do a couple things. I like it. My big fault for front end work is that it, uh, I'm often rendering something through SAS and building my CSS files into one big file. And it doesn't show me like the SAS file that I should be using. It shows me the only the rendered CSS file at the end. Next up, Dash. I really think that a lot of things that good developers, long-term developers, the reason they're better is they know how to Google better and they know how to look in documentation faster because they know what they're looking for, right? I usually know like the one of the words in the function I want or the class of function I want so I can look through and find it, which is excellent. Um, Dash is where I have offline documentation where I just have my documentation all the time. I love it. Um, I use it on Mac OS as well. It's, it doesn't sync, it doesn't sync back and forth. That's probably the one fault. Now working copy. I actually don't use working copy for like official development work because I don't, because I do all of my Git stuff off on a server somewhere. Um, but it's under development tools because it's really a Git client. I use it for a couple of the writing projects that I work with. I use it for my own Statimic site, but I don't really use it to code out of. I don't use it to manage that. Finally, on the development front is secure shell fish. I've tried a few FTP clients, right? There was uh, one by Panic that doesn't exist anymore, but Coda has one built in. Um, also, I tried. I tried a couple other ones. File Browser, I think, was one. Secure Shell Fish. Say that five times fast. Secure Shell Fish. 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 Got it. Secure Shell Fish. Um, 
you set it up in the app and then you go over to your files and it's literally just a file provider. So you can just tap on the folder you want inside Secure Shellfish and pull your files down. Now my second class of apps is going to be video editing apps, video production apps, like all the stuff I use to make to make these really, um, to make my YouTube videos. And the first up is Luma Fusion, Luma Touch, sometimes people call it, but it's Luma Fusion. And it's just awesome. Now Luma Fusion doesn't have every feature that you can find in uh, DaVinci Resolve or in Premiere or in stuff like that, but it's got a lot. It's it's really solid. Um, there's a great video channel, and I this link will be in because it's already in my notes here, called Rob HK, and he has a lot of tutorials on how to do transitions, how to do other stuff in Luma Fusion. So that's awesome. Uh, and I need to be watching more of those so that I can improve my editing skills as well. Because next up is Bruce Free. And I use Bruce Free because I have some noise over the mic. I'll give you some silence and I'll try to actually like show you what the noise is normally like. And now with Bruce Free running. I use Bruce Free. Uh, I leave a little bit of silence at the beginning of every like talking head part like this. And I cancel it out with Bruce Free because Bruce Free is awesome and it does a good job as you just heard. So Bruce Free by Clevgard, which I totally butchered, is awesome. I love it. Uh, I don't think I would be not happy with my audio quality if I didn't have that. Photo and thumbnail prep. I use a few apps here. So I'll take a photo with my 90D, which you're looking at me inside. Um, and then I'll import it into photos. I usually, I usually I can get it down to like I have four or five photos that I want. And I just use those because I usually take a specific photo of the stuff that I want um, for my thumbnail. And then I will pull it into photos and I run it through darkroom usually to like, I, you know, I have two or three and I select the one, I edit it. Um, and then I will export that uh, or save and I will bring it into an app called Fonto. Fonto, P-H-O-N-T-O uh, is a, but the ads are terrible on that app at the beginning. <laughs> Let me say that. The ads are bad at the beginning, but it's a pretty good app. It lets me standardize my um, look at my YouTube thumbnails pretty easily. I will put in my text pretty easily. I like it. Um, yeah. And now there's a few things it doesn't do. For my things in iPad with shortcuts video, what it couldn't do was add the shortcuts icon or the things icon in really well. And it couldn't do that because the shortcuts icon, the best one I could find, had a white background. I needed to pull that white background out. This is where Affinity Photo steps in. Affinity Photo lets me do more stuff like that because it's got a bunch of layers and a bunch of other stuff. I really like it. Um, I think that I could probably even drop Fonto and use that only. And there's just a few things that I, I just don't know how to do. And I haven't Googled and Fonto knew how to do it. So it also lets me like I'll export it once with uh, just the raw image for my site because I don't put like, you know, the captions on the image for my site. Um, and then I export it for email as well because I usually email my email list about it writing apps and my writing app starts with one writer which is it's good it's not I don't love it there's things I don't like about it but it's the it's not the most painful that's it's the least painful app so one writer is a it's a good app uh I it's actually kind of how I'm storing my code snippets as well I have one library for my writing and I have one library for my code snippets and I just share that uh, it's an NV alt on my Mac and I can check out my code snippets from both sites. The next big writing app I like is Scrivener, and I like it um, for any of my book-length projects. I do like writing books. I'm working on one something called the, you know, Surviving Freelancing or something like that, the X rules, because I don't know how many yet of Surviving Freelancing. So anything like that, and I like it because it lets me write uh, and store research alongside it. It's Mac and iOS. And it's pretty good. I wish the iOS version had a few more features like the Mac version. I still have to go back to my Mac to format my books to get them out to Kindle. My last kind of writing app is Devon Think to Go uh, on my iPad. It stores my research. It's pretty good. If you are, so I do realize I need to go back to my Mac for this because it does a really cool like matching of articles. So if I say, hey, like I'm writing something and I know I wrote something else about this or there's something else and I can go back to my Mac and it'll actually show me like things that are relevant to the current text that's highlighted or to the current note that I have highlighted because I have all of my writing through Dropbox indexed by Devon Think as well as I write it. Now productivity. Things 3 is my productivity tool of choice. It's not as heavy as OmniFocus. I did a review of OmniFocus a while ago too. That will be linked in the show notes. Um, but I just don't know. It was just too much. I felt like there was, like, I kept hitting barriers and I was like, you can do more. You are more powerful. 
but it all just feels like it's a pain in the butt to me. So it's a waste of my time. Um, Things 3 has just enough power that I'm good to go um, without having any big trouble. So Things 3 is awesome. It works with shortcuts really well. It has a good callback URL scheme. Finally, in productivity is Trello. I use that to interface with clients. The iOS client is pretty good. It's not anything to write home about. They clearly haven't put in like stellar amounts of work to it. It needs more keyboard shortcuts, but it's totally usable. I don't feel like I'm ever fighting it. I don't feel like it's like a problem to use. The last set of apps is kind of a mixed bag in some ways of just things that I, I need, that I like, that I use on my iPad regularly. First one is Scanner Pro. Well, that's really more an iPhone one because I scan my receipts and then put them in, although I have scanned with my iPad because it was, you know, around or my iPhone was updating, and so that's been good. I like the automations in it, so I can hit the one button and it'll automatically email me the receipt and file it in DevonThink, and then DevonThink on my Mac will actually run an automation itself when it sees new stuff and file it properly for 2019. For passwords, 1Password all the way. I've been 1Password for a long time. I tried LastPass when I dabbled in Linux because there's no real good Linux client for 1Password, except through Wine, which kind of sucks. But LastPass just did not work for my brain. We have a family account. My wife uses it. We have shared vaults for each of my kids' devices that like have my kids' accounts on their device. I don't have to search for their whatever Amazon, what not their Amazon, their um, child profiles on things. I just have the passwords. It's great. We all like getting stuff. I mean, it's Thursday, Black Friday's tomorrow. I just ordered you know a new monitor and I ordered Eero because it was cheap. And I looked almost ordered some lights. Even though I just built my cake pan light or my bowl light, um, I almost ordered lights. It's like, oh, that's a really good deal. Um, I still might order a light stand. We'll have to see. But or is like deliveries, deliveries. We like deliveries. Uh, deliveries lets me track everything that's coming in so I can keep track of it and know that despite me sitting in front of the freaking door, Canada Post said I, they delivered it and but nobody knocked on my door. Second to last app, drafts. I use drafts. Some people use it, push it really hard um, and use it for like everything. That's not me. Uh, it's a good like scratch pad. Uh, on macOS, I use something called scratch pad and it just like hit start typing scratch pad and it would open up a scratch pad for me. It was excellent. Placeholder for text. Drafts, very similar to that. I don't do a lot of writing in it. A couple times a week, I'm like, Ugh, I just want to like jot something down real quick and drafts is right there. That's why it occupies the space on my dock on my iPhone and uh, and in my iPad. Uh, drafts is excellent and then I will put the text wherever it needs to go later. My final one is Spark. Email, because we all got to deal with it at some point, even though we may not want to. And I like Spark email. It's the best email client. It's got, it's the best because it's got good keyboard shortcuts. It also sucks when you're trying to go from iPad OS and occasionally on Mac OS because the keyboard shortcuts are different. Why are they different? It's dumb. That's it. Those are the apps that I must have for my iPad. Uh, everything else I could do, not do without, but everything else is not something I use regularly. Those are the apps that I use like almost every day that in those apps, right? Anytime I'm editing video, I'm in LumaFusion. So I don't edit every day, but when I'm editing video, LumaFusion is it, right? I always touch Bruce Reef to clean my audio. I'm in Blink regularly for um, coding. I use Secure Shellfish at least once a week for something. If you've got other apps that you use, other options you think, hey, this is a better version, then I'd love to hear about it. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Yeah, that's, that's kind of all I got right now. I wish my camera would record more than 29 minutes. Or like 28 right now, and I feel like I'm like pushing the edge and I wanna do something silly. Let's play some music. This is my get to work shortcut. What's it gonna play for me? Well, there you go. Now it's focusing on my face again. Oh, glycerine. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, you can make sure you don't miss any by subscribing below. Make sure you hit that little bell icon so you get notifications if you like notifications. Although, I gotta be honest, I hate them. If you'd like to support the channel, like to make sure that the videos keep coming, that the content keeps coming, you can support me on patreon.com slash Curtis McHale. Have an awesome day.